Good morning. How you guys doing? <laughs> I'm sure some of you are not that great. I'm sorry for laughing. Um, but I'm sure some of you are doing excellent. Uh, that's, the, that's the way markets work. Two ways, up and down, bull and bear. So it's that exchange of uh, ideas and energy, uh, the battle, the battle of speculation, speculators. Uh, yeah, I've been in the speculating trenches for a couple of decades now. Yeah. And uh, I had an interest in the markets, economy, finance, money. Um, in my teens, I mean, in my teens, uh, yeah, I actually wanted to be a stockbroker or something, a trader, even as a kid. Um, but growing up in England, it, uh, especially in the 90s, as soon as I found out that, uh, you know, I was the, wasn't the right colour, <laughs> wasn't in the right schools, I didn't wasn't part of the old boys network, uh, which it was the case back in the day in England. Um, you know, you had to go to certain schools, you had to have uh, uh, friends and to get you in to the city. It was basically a clothes shop. Uh, it was a clothes shop. It was, this was before all, like, you know, East London, Canary Wharf, and the American banks really started building out here. And American banks started entering into London in the mid-80s. We had a bit of a boom there, four or five years. And they kind of pushed out the old-school um, British banks that have been around for centuries. Um, you know, how they did it? Mm, that is the question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the famous one is, I think it's Bearings Bank. The queen, the bank that the queen and the royal family use for investments and stuff. Um, there was a famous uh, film. Uh, they blamed it on one guy. I think his name was Nick, a trader out in Hong Kong. He brought down an entire bank that had been around for centuries. That was the official story, but um, I would love to go back and dig around on that. What I believe what happened was that, you know, entry of the American banks crushed the old school British banks, investment um, houses, and they took over. Essentially, that's what happened, right? Well, you can look back and see that's exactly what happened. Um, so, yeah, I've been uh, speculating for a long time. Bought my first stock when I was about, uh, about 20, 21. And, um, you know, always always dabbled during my career, um, sometimes successfully, sometimes making big gains, sometimes suffering huge losses. But th that is that is the foundational kind of way to do it if you don't have access to mentors and teachers. And uh, it's not, it wasn't like it is now. There's so much access to good quality people. Uh, so I hope you find somebody that can uh, take you under their wing that's and that's the problem it takes time it takes time for that mentor to um bring you up bring your knowledge base up bring your mentality up bring bring your awareness of um a 360 view or the markets not just you know crypto or stocks but you know really dig deep and what's going in geopolitical uh, events and how can, that all ties together right it's all ties together. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, just before I hopped on, literally like maybe 10, 20 minutes ago, I, I bought a uh, Litecoin and I purchased it through FTX and their three times long bullish token. I think they call it LTC bull. Um, and here you go. This is kind of what it's been doing for the past uh, since it's, since the inception back in what August twenty nineteen uh, started out at sixteen hundred dollars per token went all the way down to what a dollar twenty complete wipeout over ninety nine percent ninety nine point four percent ninety nine point three percent complete wipeout. Uh, if you bought the very top and held to the very bottom, right? Um, who would do that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, I've played this um, to varying degrees of success in the past. Uh, I believe I 
bought some around here, here, you know, got some pumps, you know. I never actually lost money on this token. Maybe it's a lucky token for me. Uh, but here you go. What you can see, even on a extremely leveraged token, which is completely distorted to the actual Litecoin price, right? It does actually form technical patterns because uh, it is tracking tracking a real asset. So why not? The thing is, you know, with these bull and bear tokens, um, their moves are exaggerated, and because of the daily repricing. You know, it's it's not pure, obviously, but uh, it's still stuff happens, right? Trend lines, bear flags, head and shoulders. Um, you know, the the moving average is still accurate because it's based on this price action, right? Um, so I do this fan kind of uh, decline ages ago, last year, a year ago. Look away kind of followed it right you can kind of tighten it up if it trading view allows boom there we go yeah broke out came back and tested and so what's going on here uh it's basically a bottoming kind of deal right it's kind of, it's wild action for sure but it's kind of bottoming action Oh, uh, it's not cooperating. That's why I <laughs> didn't stuck on this level. <laughs> Maybe if I, there you go, something like that. Yeah. So when will it break out? I don't know. Maybe it just continues to form this kind of channel action back and forth. Uh, that's for me unlikely. This could be the last chance to get this token below ten bucks. Ten dollars is here. Um, let's see. Again, I bought two thousand two hundred fifty-seven tokens at four dollars seventy-one. Uh, that's about eleven thousand dollars. Wish me luck. I won't need it. And why do I say I won't need it? Because uh, essentially, this is throwaway money. Uh, I don't care if it goes to zero. It can't go to zero, but. I don't care. I've got that mentality with this position. Uh, I don't care, right? Literally, it makes up such a small percentage. It doesn't even make it one percent, right? So half a percent, a third of a percent, a quarter of a percent, something like that. I don't know. It's not much. Um, so, but if it does, you know, a whoop, uh, I'll be there to catch it. And it will enable me to enjoy the summer if we are Boris says so and we're allowed to travel, etc. Probably not, right? It's gonna be looks like next year. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll have that in my kitty. So what will I do if it goes up here? Probably convert it into yes dollar stable coins and Litecoin itself, and have myself a nice little. Hodl position on Litecoin for the coming 2023 halving. So there you have it. Shall we take a look at Litecoin, the actual chart, the actual underlying assets? Uh, well, let's look at what the stock market is actually doing. Just quickly, just a little sidebar. Uh, down 215. Yesterday was down 267. Uh, so stocks are not actually overvalued. On the PE level, I believe they're not. And what if you do a monster GDP this year? What six, seven, eight percent? You know, Western countries doing six, seven, eight percent. That's very once in a generation kind of thing, right? Once in a generation. Um, so, so what? So let's go back to Litecoin. The start of this video. Uh, uh, Litecoin should be a major hodl position in your portfolio. Two thousand dollars. This is um, assuming Bitcoin hits a hundred k this year, and you have a LTC BTC ratio, of, I believe, point zero zero two. Uh, if it's zero zero 
to five, then it goes to twenty five hundred. If it goes to point one, then it goes to ten. So lots of upside, lots of upside. And look, we just basically pierced above the old high here at four thirteen. Um, is it done? Is this bull market done? I don't think so at all. Um, so I'm not too sure what the fear or and bull bull and bear sentiment is out there. I'm sure from June last night's drop, Bitcoin having a free handle, a 39 handle, I believe. Uh, should be to flush out. I mean, it should be. We've been, I've been saying that for a couple of weeks now. I mean, it'll be like 46 gray. Yeah, it should be a flush out. 43,000 should be a flush out. But here we go. It's just the longer this kind of bearish action plays out, it, people just get tired. Eventually, they want us long. And then they want to long their longs. And then they want to do a triple ball token like me. Uh, so I did that first. And then we'll start going back the other way as the prices go up. You know, I'll start going from triple ball to um, hodl position and then USD position, right? Something like that, maybe. Uh, but like I said, major hodl position up to. Pre halving, a good couple of years. You've got a couple of years of bullish action on Litecoin. So, how many halvings has it had? Uh, I think it's only had two. It's one behind like Bitcoin, I believe. I'm not too sure. I have to look it up again. Um, but the inflation rate should start bringing it in line with bitcoin obviously right that's how it will play out um there's way more coins that need to be mined on litecoin than bitcoin so maybe we'll see a giant shift in litecoin mining like uh, the hash rate start really to really really growing you know maybe elon does something with dogecoin that changes it to proof of stake right so all those dogecoin miners will definitely shift their script hashing to Litecoin. So there, there's a playbook for you right there. Um, let's just look on the daily on Litecoin. Let's look at the daily. I mean, it's kind of similar to what it's been doing since what? Last October, right? Um, a top will appear after something like this it won't be exactly like this but vertical price action what 65 372 that's not unsustainable this is perfectly sustainable rises retracement pop breakout rise pull back and he had a lovely little pattern here beautiful pattern uh you could have played this with real high probability High one, low one, high two, low two, a little squiggle, and boom. What is this? 203 to 339. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty happy with my uh, little trade I got going. Well, I just put on uh, stochastic. You know, I'm not a fan of indicators, but let's just throw them on. Uh, oversold. But you can always already see the K line is starting to curve. It's not like really uh, giving you cause for concern. Like this over here. Uh, can you see? Uh, mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, look. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But look how low it went. 11. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, again, like I said, it's hard to trade off in the case. That's why I don't really like using them. Uh, you're better off just getting into the bar, the candles themselves, and kind of seeing, determining high highs and lows, right? Highs and lows. Um, mm -hmm.
So we still got a this load obviously took out this load. Um, lower highs, obviously. So we need obviously to get above the eighteen. And what is this price? Three eighteen, fifty bucks away. Uh, it's going to take a day, two, three. Right, it's probably going to lead into next Monday. Right, we'll see. Bitcoin does weird things on weekends, so we've got a weekend coming up. Right, what day is it? Uh, Wednesday. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty confident. Uh, let's just quickly look at the momentum or momentum structure. Uh huh. Uh huh. Looks okay, doesn't it? I mean. Definitely not uh, this action. You know, it was red all the way from here. Never let up during the COVID crash. This has got a series of greens, series of reds, series of greens. Like I said, price up, consolidation, pump, consolidation, retracement, pop. Um, how do you play this if you're just looking at me and going, wow, this guy's ballsy? I'm not ballsy. Like I said, that money is throwaway money. Um, 317. It's a long way. It's a long way away. So maybe look at the four hour candle. candle I'm sorry. And you've got the two. 18 move 18 moving average on the full hour at 28895 you want to see how it reacts to this average if if you want to, if you're using that as a reference right if it tags it and then falls away again then you should run away <laughs> cuz like tags it and falls away tags it falls away you know it just closed above it there but didn't really with conviction right so, I mean, it kept you out of the market if you had this 18 average as a signal to get out. You know, it all depends how much you got, how many coins you got, how much you're hodling, how much you're trading, how much you're swing trading, how much you're degening on. It's, it's all personal. It's all and it's also personal on your experience level uh, and your needs and your bills. And, you know, it's just so complicated, all this stuff. Um, yeah, the only answer is just having more ex time, years, exposure under your belt. I mean, there's no easy, easy way around it. I'm afraid there's no easy way around it. Um, come on, Ellen. let's look up BTC, the gold coin. Divergence pops out right away, right? Um, lower, low, lower. Hmm. Couldn't even make a high post this low. Um, okay. So what? what is this candle? A nine o'clock candle. Okay, we've got three hours left to get above 40,849. I think you can do it. <laughs> um, if you can do that, then you've got a... potential of negation of the bear trend but still still got work to do right still got work to do 18 averages up there um up, up, up. we got to start somewhere you have to start somewhere and uh, why not here why not here at forty thousand? and what was the low what was the low Thirty-eight thousand five hundred and forty. man imagine if you've been waiting to like pile in that would be a great price, right? Pick up a coin at 38, <sighs> not too bad. And how's Eve doing? Eve is about crossing 3,000 as we speak. Uh, can it do it for the time it beats, goes out? 